Hello, it's so good to see you again. I'm Barbara and together with Daniel I restored a historic sailing ship Flying Coney. I could see that the engine was in need of repair. If it's getting into here, then the seals in the turbocharger are failing. Oil filter changes have been missed. Antifreeze changes have been missed. You know, general maintenance on it hasn't been carried out. This time we find out if we can save Flying Coney's engine. A working engine is essential for a boat, but over the years our engine has seen a lot of neglect and abuse. And all this led to a poor overall condition. And when we finally wanted to move the boat, we discovered some broken coolant hoses. And since we didn't want to risk the engine and the boat, we decided to fix the engine first and then move on. So that's what we will do over the course of the next few episodes. Inspect and evaluate the condition of the engine and get that poor thing running again. We will do that together with John, a professional mechanic from England. Wow, they're the ones. It'll smarten the whole look of the engine up anyway with blue hoses and nice yeah. new clips. We put a lot of effort in giving you an idea of the dimensions of Flying Coney. And believe me, most people are still surprised when they see her true size in real life. But now we found a way of shrinking the engine room and making our huge engine look like a toy. Because we found the biggest mechanic who was willing to volunteer. Luckily, we already had some experience in lifting heavy things through the engine room hatch. And luckily, we did manage to get John down there, because he's a real expert in his field and a huge character. Yeah. <laughs> Hello there, uh, my name's John. I've flown in from England to uh, help Barbara and Daniel with the DAF engine on Flying Coney. Um, I've worked on many diesel engines in my past, and I just felt it Something that I needed to do. I could see that the engine was in need of repair. Task of today is to replace all the leaking hoses, the coolant hoses. Some of them have split because, well, they're old. They're as old as the engine is when it was fitted. So they need to be replaced. So if we can get all the coolant hoses replaced, new clips, make sure that the engine is watertight, then we can run the thing up and uh, and see how she runs. It's really thick walled pipe. It would take many, many years for that to corrode through. This is, this is just casting marks that are inside the pipe itself, that's not corrosion. I thought that we would have problems here. I really thought we would have deep corrosion. If there was any serious corrosion, they would be blocked up. But there isn't. There's nothing. So now, the task if we're going to do this is to clean up the outside of these with the Wire brush first and see how we can get on. And then after that, we'll use the abrasive paper just to finish it off and make it smooth. All we need to do with that is just give it a very light clean. But this is looking good. In my opinion, the DAF 1160 is a really good engine. It has a lovely sound when it's running and it's known to have a low fuel consumption, which is good. And this one also has only 5,000 running hours, which would be in truck terms about a service life of three years. So it's really a young engine in running hours, but it also is quite old at this moment. It's almost 50 years old and this engine type recently dropped out of the normal service life. So we do have to make a decision. Yeah. 
nowhere near as bad as I first thought. I've seen it on videos and I thought this is possibly worse than, uh, than it is. But now looking at it, physically hands-on, it's not. This is eminently repairable. It's, uh, it's a lovely old beast. Discovering that our engine is actually in quite good condition and can be saved was a huge relief. Because during the last months we felt quite trapped here in this harbour. Without a working engine and without a chance to leave or go to the shipyard if necessary. And sometimes it feels like everything on this boat keeps breaking down and we have to handle all the setbacks alone with no one to talk about. Luckily there is a platform called BetterHelp which is also the sponsor of today's video. BetterHelp is an online service that connects you with a professional therapist, making it really easy to get help wherever you may be. And if you go to betterhelp.com slash flyingcony or click the link below, it might help you as well, and you even get 10% off your first month. In my weekly sessions, I work on being more relaxed when things don't go according to plan and don't lose heart if things go bad. The skills I learn are really helpful for the restoration project, but also for daily life because, at least in our lives, things rarely go as planned. BetterHelp makes it really easy to find your therapist. You just fill out a questionnaire and most of the time you get matched to your therapist within 48 hours. And if you want to change therapist for whatever reason, BetterHelp makes it as simple as clicking a button in your settings. Therapy can help you to live a healthier and happier life. So if you want to give it a try too, then click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash flyingcony. Right, the next step, well, we we'll continue on cleaning the hoses. Once we've got all these on, I think we should start building it all back up. And there'll be such a transformation. You'll have blue hoses and the clips will just set it off. And it's never going to win a beauty pageant, but it's going to be a million percent better than what it was. Do we remember how it all goes together? Weren't you taking note? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Can you rewind the video? Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. there'll be room for it to wriggle around. Yeah. Let's get them on first. Yeah. yeah. tight as that needs to go. Any further, you're going to dig into the hose. Once it's up and running, let it get hot, and then we'll just look round it, and any of them that are weeping, we nip up. You don't need to go all gorilla on them. Also a decision we had to make is what type of hose clamps we do want to use. There are these narrower ones, the ordinary Jubilee clips or hose clamps, and then you do have the heavy duty hose clamps like this one here. And you can use uh, two of the ordinary ones or one of the heavy duty ones. Usually with silicon hoses, the heavy duty ones do work better and in my opinion one hose clamp is enough, but there are different opinions and we worked with them. They also look nicer on the engine and of course they are stainless. The thing is, see how these have met? There's no gap there. Yep. So, you, and you need to have a gap because that is not, no matter how tight you tighten that now, that's never gonna compress that hose anymore. It's certainly got it and it's not gonna move, but it's right on the edge. So what we really needed was a hose clamp in between what we've got. If it's about halfway up, halfway in, then that's where it... That's fine. Yeah, that's well up. The DAF 1160 was built in many different versions. And to make construction of this engine easier, they connected the different parts, like, for example, the intercooler, using hoses. 
And the big job and the big task for, for this maintenance was to exchange most of the hoses. And now you have two options. Um, either you take silicon hoses like we did or you take rubber hoses. Rubber hoses are a bit easier to install because there are multiple ways of uh, getting them tight. But the silicon hoses are usually the better choice. They do last for longer. And the only real downside is that you, you have to be more careful preparing the pipes to get it watertight. So that's the reason why we went with silicon hoses and they also look really, really stunning on the engine. You see what I was saying about how smooth bore they are if they've got any imperfections on the hose itself on the actual stub of the yeah. thing itself they won't seal so we've got to get that as flat as possible but that's fine excellent We are done with exchanging one third of the hoses, but before we continue, let's have a look at the old Perkins generator. That one is still from Flying Coney's fishing days. It is a 380 volt genset and it hasn't run for decades. So let's see if it's still turning. A lot of people have asked whether this generator turns. Um, we originally thought it may just be stuck. Taking the filler cap off, there's plenty of oil around it. So. The simple, the simple thing was, would be to turn it. We can't get directly onto the crankshaft, but if we put a socket on the alternator and just press down on the alternator belt, lo and behold, it's turning and there is compression. There is compression. So the engine hasn't stuck inside or not. But I think this is, this is all good. Everything we're touching so far is all good. It's all coming out, you know? Um, what we thought was terminal isn't, and what we thought was broken isn't. So the good news is probably we can fix the Perkins. And I know John is already looking for spare parts and gaskets. Which brings us to the next problem. What to do with the electric side? Can we fix it? Should we replace it? And what to do with two generators? But all that are problems for future us. Right now, we are really happy that the Perkins is turning. And now, let's continue exchanging broken hoses. You will always have a little bit of oil in the intercooler. As long as it's not dripping out, there's, there's virtually no carbon in it very very clean. The oil that we saw when we took the um, intake pipes off the intercooler was minimal. Um, you're going to expect that anyway because the engine is a slow running engine. It's oil builds up. It doesn't have enough time or enough movement of air <coughs> to pull it in and go. So it's fine. Um, I know that you said that at one point you were concerned that DAFs smoke a bit. The only reason that is, is because of glaze on the cylinder bores. I think we've caught this in time, that if once it's back together, it needs to go on a good long run, get nice and hot, so that any oil in the intercooler gets pulled into the inlet manifold, burnt, and it'll clean itself. Having John here and working together with such an experienced mechanic was a huge help. And speaking about help, this videos and the whole refit wouldn't be possible without the generous support of our lovely Patreons. So thanks a lot folks for making this all possible. And by the way, we published an extended version of this video on Patreon. Here on YouTube there is only so much time to tell a story. But we had some pretty intense days working on the engine and there were so many interesting details. So we made a longer, less edited version for you. I've seen intakes where this is hard, well, it's, it's about an inch diameter. You've had to chip it out. And the problem is, if that is restricted, then so is all the inlet manifold. It's, it, it packs itself in there. But this is good news. This is really good news. So let's put it back together.
So we now have basically four options. The first one would be to give the engine a good maintenance, exchange the oil, the filters, exchange the coolant hoses like we do now, but basically only run it until it breaks. That's something we could consider if we do find excessive corrosion and if, if it's simply not worse to give the engine a further repair. The second option would be to give the engine a good refresh and dig into the parts of the engine like adjusting valve clearances, taking the oil pan off, having a look at the crankcase, having a look at the bearings. And that's what we could consider if we do find that the engine is in good condition. The third option would be to give the engine a real overhaul, maybe taking the engine out of the boat, having it into pieces, um, and really remanufacture this engine. And the fourth option would be to remove the engine, drop it out and put a new engine in. But actually I don't like this option because I do like the Duff and I do think it's a big part of the history. It's the beating heart of Flying Coney and it's part of the ship since almost 50 years. So just dropping it out because we can do it now, um, there's, there's no reason to do that. The good thing is all of the options start with what we are doing now. We need to get the engine running again. We need to hear how it sounds. We need to see if everything is all right. And then we can decide further. Everything so far is looking pretty good. Even though the engine went mostly idle, there isn't much buildup, which is a nice surprise. But before we continue with the coolant hoses on the port side, let's have a look at the alternator. The alternator belts are very, very, very loose. Um, that's not going to be good for charging the batteries, um, being that it's uh, quite a high output alternator, it will not be driving full efficiency. So what we need to do is tension the alternator. These are decent belts. So I just think, being that it's down here in a cold engine room, they have just slackened themselves off. So the ideal thing to do with this, and this is where <laughs> A lot of people make the mistake. We only want enough tension to drive the alternator. We don't want to overdo it because that will damage its bearings and the bearings in the water pump. So, slacken this bolt off here, apply some tension downwards, and you just want to be able to move the belts about, what, half an inch in, feeling firm resistance. Once you've, once you've achieved that, Tighten the bolt up. And that's the alternator tension set. That is as simple as that. With that out of the way, we finally get to the part that started this whole hose exchanging adventure. Now say that three times in a row. On this side of the engine, we had several hoses that were weeping for years and one was completely broken. So the coolant was constantly dripping on the engine parts and everything was covered in coolant, dirt and rust. So actually that was the part of the engine we were most concerned of. One downside of the ordinary Jubilee clips is that they can cut into the hoses and ultimately that's what happened at our engine that they were too thin and they tried to get it watertight and they tightened the hose clamps to a point where the hoses were breaking. I would only be worried about this if these little ears here are cast in to stop the pipe coming off, those coming off had eroded away to nothing. That would be my only concern. If they're still there, and they are, then in fine. We need to undo that bracket so that we can move that hose 
Oh, is that? Are they, is it just those two there? Yeah, it's just yes. them. Oh, crikey, they're nothing. What a team. What a team. got an awful lot done. Every hose has been replaced that needed replacing. Um, the engine is now going to be cool and tight and just look at the difference. Just look at the difference. We've made an incredible, incredible achievement. Very pleased with the way it's gone. Very, very pleased. From just looking inside the pipes, um, far, far less corrosion than I ever, ever thought there would be. Um, there is going to be corrosion because it's a, it's a cast iron block. Can't get away with it, the fact that it's had plain water in it. But the plain water does not appear to have harmed it that bad. So all the breather pipes, all the intake pipes, clear. Tiny little bit of oil in the intercooler, but normal, because the engine's only ever idled. I genuinely don't think that this is an engine beyond repair. Um, it just needs a little bit more attention to, spent on it in the way of servicing and maintenance. So uh, all in all, very impressed with it. In the next episode of the Engine Room series, we will find out if the hoses are actually watertight. If we bought enough oil. And if the engine will start eventually. We exchanged all 25 hoses. I actually ordered the right sizes and didn't forget anything. And overall, the condition of the engine is way better than we expected. But that's all we have time for today. And if you don't want to miss the next video where we will do the oil and filter changes and fill up the cooling system and see if there are any leaks and hopefully start the engine, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so YouTube notifies you each time we publish a new video. And if you want to see the extended version of this video, then head over to Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. But this is looking good. This is looking good.